So here we talk about cellular boundary formula. Yeah, this you can find on page 140 of Hatcher. So the way we uh, do this is like this. You, we want to talk about the boundary map of a cell. Yeah, so let us see the boundary map of an N cell. So the boundary map of an N cell, you obviously will have to go to N minus 1 cell. But what will be the coefficients of these N minus 1 cells in the chain? So the coefficients will be precisely the degree maps. Yeah, which we haven't defined yet. So you are going from, um, you are trying to find the boundary of an N cell. And obviously we know the boundary of an N cell will be N minus 1 cell. But it will be a chain and this chain will have coefficients and we are saying these coefficients are degrees now since they are degrees they have to go from say Sn to Sn but since we are in n-1 dimension we have to talk about Sn-1 to Sn-1 yeah so alpha where is the index for the n cell and beta the index for the n-1 cell so how does this map look in practice so we know when we construct xn from xn minus 1, what we essentially do is we, uh, we take the boundary of the n cell and uh, attach it to the n minus 1 cell. Yeah, so how should we see this? We should see s beta n minus 1 as the, in the n minus 1 cell, you take the disk and you take its boundary yeah and that will give you s beta n minus 1 so i don't think we should write e beta n minus 1 in the denominator so yeah so you think like this s beta n minus 1 is you're talking about x n minus 1 spaces as something like a disk modulo there boundary yeah so this example will make this more clear so we will give an example of three torus. This example can be found on page 142 of Hatcher. Yeah, and uh, the Klein bottle is actually a uh, uh, three-dimensional Klein bottle is also given, which is nothing but a small extension of this. So let us first draw the 3D torus. So 3D torus looks like a cube with six faces. So yeah, so while I draw this, you should focus on uh, the boundary map again. So basically what we are saying is that you take uh, from xn minus 1, you take the disk out and collapse its boundary to a point. Yeah, so this e beta n minus 1 should not be the denominator, but it should be yeah, s beta n minus 1 is equivalent to xn minus 1 minus e beta and minus 1 yeah anyway so now I have drawn the cube but you see how I'm marking the arrows the front and the back so the arrows in blue are a arrows in green are say b and arrows in pink are c so we have only three edges a b c and we have only three faces yeah the opposite faces are identified with each other front is identified with back left side with right side top with bottom so the cell chain complex will look something like this where the zeroth dimension this is generated by vertex v so everywhere there is just a single vertex v so there are three edges a b c a is represented by the color blue b by color green and c by color pink so there are three faces so six faces are there but the faces are identified with each other just like in torus there are four edges but when you identify you just get two edges yeah so this is uh, so i'm marking these three edges now this is front and back then the second edge is top and bottom then left and right yeah left and right i will first write in pink and then left in pink yeah so these are the three faces and the last z is the this is just the surface 
three dimensional surface so we want to compute the homology of a 3d torus so the first map is multiplication by zero the second map is also multiplication by zero yeah that is easy because there are only three edges a b c both of them has vertex v so v minus v is zero just like in torus here also it is zero because for every face when you start computing the homology is just like torus because every face you take out looks like torus and edges cancel out yeah so the green will cancel out with green blue will cancel out with blue in the front face itself just like we did in torus because the orientations they come in pairs and the orientations are opposite so the third map we also claim is zero so if the third map is zero then you obviously can compute homology groups homology groups will be precisely the same the cell the cell complexes yeah we have mentioned it before so h0 will be z h1 will be z cube h2 will be z cube and h3 will be z cube z yeah precisely the cell uh, the chain complexes so how do we prove that d3 is zero to prove d3 is zero we have to show that the boundaries all get mapped to zero yeah so we have to use the cellular boundary formula so we are using the cellular boundary formula so the purpose is if we show that d alpha beta is zero for all three cells yeah because this e, e beta n minus one in this case is nothing but the three faces one two three yeah there are six faces but only three of them are unique so so we are uh, trying to prove the first line of this slide that's a dn e alpha n equals to sigma beta d alpha beta e beta n minus one so we are trying to prove that d alpha beta which we are going to write as delta delta alpha beta from s2 to s2 since it's the 3d surface so n minus one is this thing yeah this is zero for all three faces so we will just do it for one face and then say that it repeats yeah so this d alpha beta acts on uh, yeah different faces but obviously it actually acts on all faces but primarily act on two opposite faces i mean what I'm saying is kind of tautological, but it will be clear in a minute. So how should we do this? So you take two opposite faces. Yeah. So for our case, let us take the front and the back and map them to the disk D2. Now there are other four faces, left, right, top and bottom. You map them to the boundary of the disk. So you've taken some disk, you map front and uh, back to it and you have taken other four faces and mapped to the boundary of it boundary of the disk so you can do that for all six faces so instead of front back now you can say left right and other four faces to the disk then you can say top bottom to the disk and other four faces front back left right to the boundary so, but how does this produce the zero map? That is the question. So we are saying local degree for the front face will be plus one and local degree for the back face will be minus one. So in that case, if that is true, then plus one minus one will be zero. But we have to show that this front face has local degree plus one and the back face has local degree minus one. So this is what uh, remains to be proved so uh, the way hatcher puts it it's he says the back face is just a reflection of the front face now just as in we did in a torus we identify the edges here we are trying to identify the faces so first i draw the front face i just copy it down yeah so two edges in so yeah, A is in blue, then B is in green. I draw that. Now I want to draw the back face. So first I draw this edge, which I have just pulled. 
because you're trying to stretch the rubber from behind to put it together. Yes, I've stretched it. So first I will draw uh, the face where I'm pointing green. So now notice that this top edge gets the orientation is reversed. Yeah, the arrow is pointing in the opposite direction just because you've stretched. It's just like a eraser lying on your table. You're trying to pull the back end so the, the orientation reverses. Now you can see it's a reflection. Clearly you can see it's a reflection. So what you get is a zero. And that is pretty much it. That is the end of the story.